Hi guys, welcome back. So um, for all those who were watching the last class and are now waiting to get into this class, uh, we are not going to be doing what this class description says. Uh, we were reading an article in the last class uh, published in CBC News. CBC News is Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And it was about, it is about the, uh, the recent meteorite crash in Russia. It happened just this past Friday. Uh, so many people have been injured um, and there's been a lot of damage in Russia because of it. So what we are going to be doing today is reading uh, we're going to continue reading the article from the last class. So we were reading it in the last class. For all those who are watching, uh, we are going to continue reading it uh, in today's class and finish it off. It's going to be a nice, uh, a nice class to cover vocabulary, reading, speaking, and asking questions. So uh, there's some technical uh, language being used in the article, such as we just covered what a sonic boom was. Um, and we're going to read about how this meteorite crash has been one of the biggest incidences of its kind in the last 100 years in uh, uh, in our history. In our history, okay. So it's uh, it's quite a significant event that has happened, and uh, it's very important to know exactly what's going on. All right. And we have Yuri. Welcome, Yuri. Hi. Yuri is actually from Russia. And he told me what it's actually like there right now, what's going on, and you know how people are feeling. And um, oh, what was I going to say? And I'm, I'm actually very happy Yuri's here because a lot of times we are experiencing, we're reading Russian names and we're not really sure how to say them. So I'm sure Yuri can correct us because I'm not Russian, so I'm not too, too sure how to say the names of cities or of, of some of the people. All right. Um, the first. A few minutes of class are reserved for premium account users. So Yuri is a premium account user. Uh, Imad and Ahmed, I'm assuming so are you guys. Um, after after the premium account users have reserved the seat and they have joined the class in the first two minutes, then the spots open up for everybody else. All right. So the spots are now open and everybody looks like they got in and class is now full. Sweet. That's awesome. Um, and we can we can go on. So for all those who were not in the last class, were you watching the last class? Uh, so Ahmed and Imad, Ahmed, Imad, and hi, hi, hi Imad, how are you? Nice, thank you. Okay, so today we have two Ahmeds and two Imads, all right? <laughs> so yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to like learn your full names now. So we have Imad Shah and we have Imad Mani. Then we have Ahmed Zizo and Ahmed Kadri. So call guys, me Zizo. Zizo. All right. So yes, right, I will <laughs> be very happy. Okay. So we have a Zizo and we have an Ahmed and we have two Imads. All right. Um, was was everybody uh, was everybody watching the last class? Or was everybody familiar with what we were doing in the last class? Yeah, I was following. On You're the following. Outside, you know? Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, because we are not going to be covering what uh, what the class description says. If we have time at the end of this class after we're done reading the article, then we we might uh, go and read uh, up on uh, on eye care, which is what this class was originally scheduled for. Um, but uh, I really want to finish this article, and you know, I want to get the information out there that people need to know to be up to speed with uh, the recent uh, incident in Russia, okay? Um, so everybody good? Everybody, everybody, I feel like everybody knows what's going on, all right? So Norbert, hi Norbert. Hi. Happy to see you, happy you're here. Um, and um, does everybody know where the article is? Everybody has a link to the article? No. No? Okay. Oh, that's okay. It's, uh, I posted it in the chat box. Okay, so I just posted it and you're welcome. I just posted it in the Verbling chat. So if you guys want to open that article, it is an article we are reading uh, from uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, CBC News. Um, we have covered a little more than half of it. We are on largest since 1908. So we just read about how meteors usually cause 
huge sonic booms and um, me and uh, uh, how the injuries in Russia uh, because of the recent meteorite crash they're they're very rare people don't usually get hurt but because they, they don't usually get hurt as as often and in such numbers but because the the city close by where this happened it had about a million residents uh, that's a lot of people and that's a lot of broken glass broken glass was the main reason that uh, people in Russia were injured okay so uh, does, does anybody have any questions are you guys unclear about anything I, I know that this is kinda of like a transition from the last class to this class but if, the, if you're unclear just ask me now um, I and, demand uh, a new class, please, please. I demand a new class because I didn't show your last class. Yeah. I will be. Yeah. You, you'll you'll be lost. Scattered. Uh, yeah. yeah. I will yeah. be scattered. Yeah. I, I know what yeah. you mean, and because this is a, I'm I'm going to be scheduling this as a reading class. You are more than welcome to read the the earlier part of the article on your own, and then come back and join us. Is that okay? Like you can come back and start and I'll get you to read as well. So, right? so I will be kicked out and will uh, return? No, 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 no. So how I can do that? <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying stay in class. Stay in class and you can keep yourself muted and you can read the article and when you're up to speed you are more than welcome to be like I'm I'm on top of this, I got this, alright? Thank okay. you. Okay, Ziza, okay. you're, you're welcome. You can, yeah, you can keep yourself muted, you don't need to talk but when you read, you can come up and be like, "I'm ready to have a discussion. I want to. I want my voice heard now." All right. So you are more than welcome to do that. All right. Okay. So let's get started. I'm going to Teacher. be. Yes. Yes. Eric? Teacher, how we? Yes. How we pronounce the zero and the year? You say. Nineteen. Nineteen oh eight. Oh. Yeah. Nineteen oh eight. Yeah. See? Uh, okay. okay. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. The, I don't want to say that the correct way to say is that, but that is like we we don't say nineteen nineteen. We can say nineteen oh nineteen hundred eight. You know, but it's too wordy. The conventional is nineteen oh eight. All right. Uh, it, okay. Yeah. Eighteen. Any? Yeah. Eighteen oh seven. Seventeen oh six. Okay. So oh. Any? Yeah, it's ahead. incorrect. Say 1908. Yeah, 19. Yeah. Sorry, what did you say? 1908 is it's in, it's incorrect. 1908. Yeah, 1908 is incorrect. Yeah. Okay. So Great. so when you say years like this, so I've written it in the chat box. So 1908, which is the last time we had such a big uh, meteorite crash um, on the Earth. Uh, we don't say 1908. You could say it, but it's not conventionally right. We'd say 1908. Uh, so the zero, you say an O instead of zero. Okay. Uh, okay. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. And Hello. ask me. Yeah, uh -huh. Ask me any questions if I have any. Hi. Hi, Imad Mani. Hi. Did you finish uh, reading the articles? No, we're not. We're continue reading it. We're going to continue reading it. And if you want to read the earlier part on your own and then join us. Uh, you are more than welcome to do that, okay? Okay, can you, can you inform me where, where did you arrive in the uh, article? Yeah, we are in largest since 1908. So I am going to share my screen and uh, you'll see where we are, alright? So okay. I'm going to be sharing my screen, but everybody is more than welcome to read from their own screen. So uh, I've given you the article link in uh, the Verbling chat box. It's right there. Um, but you are more than welcome to read it on your own from your own browsers. Uh, I'm just sharing it here so everybody knows where what we're reading. All right. Okay. So largest since 1908. Uh, we just covered that meteorites this size uh, they cause considerable si sonic booms. Sonic boom is the sound that you hear when you break the sound barrier. So when you go faster than the speed of sound, you hear a sonic boom. Okay. Uh, and many broken windows exposed residents to the bitter cold as temperatures in the city were expected to plummet to minus 20 degrees to minus 20 Celsius overnight. Okay, so I'm just going to explain a couple of words here. Everybody knows what bitter is, right? Bitter? Do you guys know what that means? Yeah, bitter is usually a taste. So you can eat foods that are bitter. When something is bitter cold, it's so cold that like it, it hurts your fingers. All right. So if you're if you're standing like for example minus 20 is very very cold. 
So if you are in Russia or in Canada and you're standing outside in that wet, in that temperature, parts of your body are going to start hurting because of the cold. Most likely your fingers. So your fingers and your toes, they're going to start hurting because of how cold it is. And when you feel that amount of cold, it's called to be bitterly cold. Okay? Everybody understands why we're using it as bitter cold? Yes. Yeah, it's it's almost like it's, yes. start, yeah, it's starting to hurt you. That's how cold it is. Um, temperatures in the city were expected to plummet. Who can tell me what plummet is? It's like falling down or yeah. Yeah. become very cold. Yeah, plummet means to go down really fast. So they were like, in the evening, it was 2 degrees. But four hours later, the temperatures had plummeted to negative 20 degrees. So they fell down. They went down really, really quickly. Okay? The plummet means to go down. Okay? Uh, we also do use it when we talk about currency, when a currency becomes really weak. Okay? They plummeted. All right? Uh, so ex uh, temperature expected to plummet to minus, to, so to go all the way down to minus 20 Celsius overnight. The regional governor uh, put out a call for any workers who knew how to who knew how to repair windows. So, like we were talking about, um, windows was the main reason uh, people were injured as badly as they were. Okay, so that that's where we are. I hope everybody is comfortable. And if you guys are, let's let's continue reading. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, perfect. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Ahmad, can I get you to read? Let me just share my screen so everybody knows where we are. Imad, can I get you to read from here? Meteorites uh, are small pieces. Yeah. Meteorites are small pieces of space. Debris. 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 We don't say the S. Yeah. This is debris. Yeah. Debris. Mm -hmm. Usually part of comet uh, or asteroids that are an uh, collisions and collision that are on on a collision course on a collision course a collision course the earth they become meteorites uh, when they enter uh, the earth atmosphere most meteorites burn up in the atmosphere but the but if they survive uh, the uh, friction the frictional frictional, frictional yeah Frictional heat, heating, uh, and strike the surface of the Earth. They are called meteoroids. Perfect. Thank you, Ahmad. So that's actually quite that's actually quite a helpful paragraph right there because we we now know what the difference is between a comet, an asteroid, a meteor, and a meteorite. Okay. So um, before I get into the technical details, any questions? What words do you guys not know? The one that uh, to place to pry Sorry. To pry uh, the word to pry. Debris. Um, debris. 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 Okay. So this word right here, I'm going to write it in the chat box. It's debris, and you don't say the s at the end. Okay. You I mean you don't say debris. All right. And somebody, can everybody mute their mics? I I I hear like a really loud static noise from someone's mic. Okay. Awesome. So this call is debris. So this is um, uh, basically junk, garbage, and dirt. All right. So meteorites are small pieces of space debris. So rocks that are flying around in space are called space debris, rubbish. Hamid is asking, is it rubbish? Yes. So just it's nothing. It's not a. It's not a planet. It's not you know. It's not a star. It's just nothing. Uh, rocks that have managed to escape into the the universe or in the galaxy just flying around and then they kind of come together and they look like you know dirt from space that's called space debris and you can have debris from anywhere you can have a uh, uh, you know debris from a garbage truck as well you know so debris is just garbage rubbish that is left behind okay yeah small parts and debris is in small parts it's not like huge chunks like if a a big rock was coming towards the earth, you wouldn't say debris is coming towards the earth. You would say it's a rock or it's a comet or an asteroid. Okay, debris has to be small and it has to be, you know, like junk pieces. Richard has to go. I'm sorry, Richard, to seeing you go, but uh, but bye. Have a, it was nice having you join us class and watch it. All right, thanks so much. Okay, 
So meteorites, that's what they are. Meteorites are small pieces of space debris, usually parts of comets or asteroids, all right, that are on a collision course with the Earth. So when you have a rock, a space rock that is flying out in space, it's called a comet or an asteroid, all right? It's just, it's a, it's a dry rock just flying around in space. When it enters the Earth's atmosphere, so when it becomes, when it gets close to the Earth, and they enter the atmosphere, they become meteors. And if they hit the Earth's atmosphere, they're called meteorites. All right? So does everybody understand the difference in vocabulary, what the difference is between all these words? So you can be hearing all of them. You can hear an asteroid. Um, oh, so we were reading earlier in the article that after this meteorite hit the Earth, and as another asteroid passed the Earth, OK? So if that asteroid had entered the Earth's atmosphere and fallen to the Earth as well, that asteroid would have been called a meteorite as well. Okay? So it's all different phases. So a rock out in space in the Earth's atmosphere, and once it's hit the Earth, they're all called different things. All right? Everybody understand? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay, yeah. awesome. Any, any other questions about this, uh, about this paragraph? Collision course. Everybody knows what a collision course is? Oh, like the line, the line that the Earth go on, that intersects with the la, uh, the track of the comets of the asteroid. Yeah, so, it's it's going, it's aiming for it, right? So Hamid is saying, crash each other. Yeah. So like this is the Earth. Say this is the Earth, and this is the meteorite. So the meteorite is coming towards the Earth. All right. So this. This motion, the fact that it's going to hit the Earth, it's on a collision course. So at the end, the two are going to collide, and that's called a collision course. So when something is headed for something, you know that this meteorite is going to hit the Earth, then the meteorite is on a collision course with the Earth. All right? Okay? Accident. It's an accident. It's, it's, it is an, this is an accident, but after a certain amount of time, because the Earth has gravity, right? The Earth has a gravitational pull. So if the asteroid in space gets so close to the Earth that it gets stuck in the Earth's gravity belt, all right? So if, if you are flying in space and you don't come in, come in contact with the Earth's gravity belt, then the asteroid can just pass by. It won't hit the Earth. But if it gets at a distance where the Earth's gravity belt grabs grabs onto the asteroid, then it's going to collide with the Earth. Then it's on a collision course, OK? All right? Everybody understand the difference? So meteorites and asteroids, they hit the Earth. There's a reason why we, we have these incidences, because the Earth has a very strong gravity belt. And once something enters that gravity belt, it's going to move towards the center of the Earth, all right? Because the center of the Earth is where all the gravity is, uh, you know, where, where it's concentrated, all right? So it's on a collision course. It grabbed onto the belt and it uh, onto the gravity belt and it and it hit the earth. Awesome. Any questions? Anything? Any? All right. No. Okay. So and then yes. so when Earth when uh, meteors burn up in the atmosphere, but if they survive the frictional heat, everybody knows what friction is, right? When two objects rub against each other. So here, I'm making friction right now. Yeah. So so when the asteroid and the Earth's atmosphere, when they are, you know, kind of fighting against each other, there, there's frictional heat. There's friction over there. All right, uh, frictional heat and strike the Earth's surface. They are called meteorites. Okay. Somebody was asking me this in class, like, what's the difference between a meteor and a meteorite, an asteroid and a comet? So this is a very, very good paragraph because it covers all, all of that. All right. Comet and asteroid are almost the same thing. A comet is smaller than an asteroid. So an asteroid could be this big. A comet could be this big. All right. It's usually it's just it's just a size thing, OK? Awesome. Next, can I get Imad money? Are you comfortable reading the article with us, Imad? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, OK. Can I get you to read from NASA all the way down to Earth? So just finish these two paragraphs, please. OK. Uh, NASA said the Russian fireball was the largest reported since 1908. When a, when a meteor hit Tunguska? Tunguska? Is that how you say it, Yuri? Yuri, is it Tunguska? Tunguska. Tunguska, Siberia. Yeah, go ahead. That's Siberia and flatten an estimate 80 million trees. Uh, Chelyabinsk is about. Chelyabinsk. That's it's pronounced Chelyabinsk. 
Is it noun or or city? Oh, or? Chelyabinsk is an is a noun. It's the city where this happened, uh, oh. or city close to where this happened. So it's pronounced Chelyabinsk. Chelyabinsk mm -hmm. is about five thousand kilometers west of Tankista. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tankista yeah, blast attributed a, a comet or asteroid fragment is generally estimated to have been about ten megaton. Perfect. Go ahead. Uh, scientists believe that a far larger meteorite strike on that on what today is Me Mexico's so Yucatan, Yucatan, Peninsula. Uh, uh, I, I have problems with that's with, okay. Yucatan Peninsula, Peninsula, Peninsula may have been responsible for the extinction of of the dinosaur about six uh, sixty six million years ago. According to what theory? According, the to that, impact, according to that theory. According to that theory, the impact would have thrown up fast amounts of dust that blanketed blanketed the sky, blanketed blanketed the sky for 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 decades and at altered 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 the climate on Earth. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Imad. All right. So NASA said that the Russian that this Russian fireball fireball exactly because it's it's fireball because like I said it left a trail of fire behind and it was on fire when it entered the Earth's atmosphere the meteorite caught fire because of friction it was the largest reported since 1908 when a meteor another meteor hit Siberia so Siberia is the northern part of Russia so this is also in Russia and flattened an estimated 80 million trees. Everybody I can understand what this means, right? To flatten? Yeah? No. To fla Sorry? Crushed. Yeah, the crushed, exactly. So they crushed uh, 80 million trees. So if you were to go there, the trees would all be, like there would be no trees, there would be nothing. Everything would be crushed and flattened. So this word flattened comes from to flat out, all right? Flat means something that is plain. There's no hills. There's no mountains. There's there's no curves. There's it's all flat and plain. All right. Um, Chelyabinsk is about five thousand kilometers west of Ting Tinguska. All right. So it's it's not very close, but it's not very far either. Like it's in the same country, right? So the Tinguska blast attributed to a comet or asteroid fragment. So. It was a small piece of a comet or an asteroid. So it wasn't even a big enough rock to be called an asteroid or a comet. It was a small piece of one of these two comet or asteroid that uh, was debris. It was flying around in space and it uh, made contact with the Earth. Um, and that is what caused that uh, crash uh, in 1908. Okay, and this says this is about 10 megatons. All right, I believe we read up here that this was 20 atomic bombs. I don't know if it says how many megatons it was. We released 300 to 500 kilotons of energy. All right, so these are really, really, these are really big blasts and they have been releasing a lot of energy, all right? Um, scientists believe that a far larger meteorite strike on what today is Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula may have been responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs about 66 million years ago. Does everybody know about about that theory? Everybody knows what a theory is, right? Yes. Maybe? Yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. A theory is a, 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 a scientific explanation that has not been proven, all right? So there's, you, you can't be like, oh, this is what is act this is what actually happened the dinosaurs went extinct because of this reason we don't have enough evidence to say that it's a fact so it's a theory it's what we generally believe happened so the theory is that uh, 66 million years ago dinosaurs were on the earth and there was a big meteorite that hit the earth and which is and you can tell where it is because it's left the crater in mexico a uh, crater is like a hole that a meteorite leaves behind all right and it when it struck the earth it, there was so much force and so much impact that all the dust around the meteorite, it, it flew, like it, it got up and it flew into space and it covered the entire atmosphere of the Earth. So all of Earth's atmosphere was covered with dust. So uh, when that happens, it's called to blanket the atmosphere. Everybody knows what a blanket is, right? It's like a, 
you, when you sleep at night, you take a blanket on top of you. Yes. So when yeah. something covers you completely and entirely like that, like a blanket, it's blanketing you. So the dust blanketed the Earth's atmosphere. What do you think that did? Why, why, why do you think that might have led to the extinction of the dinosaurs? Because increasing the temperature of the Earth. Yeah. So when you blanket the Earth in dust, the atmosphere, the sunlight cannot get through. All right? So sunlight cannot get through. That means the Earth's temperatures are going to go down. It's not going to be as hot as it was. What else is it going to do? If there's no sunlight, what, what's going to happen? There is no photosynthesis process. Exactly. That for the growing of the plant and exchanging of the oxygen and carbon dioxide. Perfect. So if, if your Earth's atmosphere is blanketed by dust, you're not going to get sunlight. If you're not going to get sunlight, it's going to get cold. If it gets cold, animals and plants are going to start dying. Also, if there's no sunlight, plants cannot live. Plants need sunlight to make oxygen, which is how everything lives on this planet. So there's going to be a whole bunch of different things. So this is a big theory that scientists believe could be the reason why dinosaurs went extinct. Okay? Everything is everybody clear on what I'm trying to say? So this entire paragraph, that's what it says. According to that theory, the impact would have thrown out vast amounts of dust that blanketed, that covered the sky for decades, so for years and years, and it altered. Altered means to change. Okay? It altered the Earth's uh, the climate on the Earth. Any questions? Anything that's unclear? Ask me. It's okay. It's okay. The word vast. The vast. Oh, vast means uh, widespread. So like a lot. Uh, well, let me see which context is being used in. Um, vast amount. So a lot of amount. Vast amounts is basically an, another way of saying a lot of something. All right. So vast Huge. amounts yeah. of yeah, exactly. Thrown up vast mm. amounts of dust, meaning a lot of dust. Okay. Vast is huge, big. In high in high in quality quantity, everybody quantity. clear? Yeah, quantity. Sorry, yeah. quantity versus quality. Awesome. Um, if I'm going into too much detail, or if it's like becoming boring or dry or dry, just let me know. All right. I just want. I just can't explain some of these words without everybody knowing what like their context is. All right. So let's move on. Who would like to read next? Difficult to detect. So mm -hmm. one of me is Zizo. Okay, so I'm just going to say that the one of the reasons people were so shocked and startled and panicked as they were was because there was there was no warning. They were not warned that this was going to happen. Nobody knew. And we're going to read now why that is. Why did Russian scientists or scientists from NASA why were they not able to detect this before this happened? All right. So it was a difficult. Uh, it was difficult to detect, detect it for a couple of reasons, and now we're going to read why, all right? So, Zizo, I'm going to share my screen, and I will get you to read difficult to detect. So can I get you to read the first and second paragraph, please? Yes, difficult to detect. The object hailed from the hailed. asteroid belt... Hailed. Hailed. Hailed from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, becoming a meteor as it streaked through the Earth's atmosphere. Bill Koch head of the Metroid Environments Office at NASA Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, said. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, can you read the second paragraph yeah. as well? Yeah. Paul Schultz, research scientist at the New Earth Object Program Office at the Jet Propul Propul Pro Propulsion, Propulsion. Propulsion. Propulsion Laboratory, said that ground telescopes, telescope, Tel yeah. telescopes, would have needed to point in the right direction at the right time to spot Friday's incoming metro. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dizo. Yes. Okay. So, what questions do you guys have about these two paragraphs? The object hailed from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. So, there is an asteroid belt. Mars and Jupiter are two planets in our solar system. And between them, there's an asteroid belt. So, there are many asteroids and there are many rocks flying around in space. Uh, between those two planets, okay? And again, it has to do with gravity. So the gravity of those two planets keeps these asteroids in place. They're not stat. They're, they're not. They're not still. They're not static. They're moving around in space. But because they're unable to escape from the gravity of both those planets, there's an asteroid belt there. So they stay in that region in space. All right. Um, 
So the object's hailed. Everybody knows what it means to hail from somewhere? Who can tell me what that means? It's like emerged? To or... come, yeah, emerged uh, to come from. Okay? So when something hails from somewhere, it comes from there. All right? So this object hailed, it came from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and it became a meteorite as it streaked. Who can tell me what it means to streak? Anybody knows what that means? Very fast. Yes, exactly. So when you move really fast, it means to go, it means to streak, all right? So this, this is streaking, whoosh, right? So it's streaked through the Earth's atmosphere, whoosh, all right? It didn't move like this, okay? It wasn't moving like that. It was moving like, whoosh, right? This is this motion is called speed, like light speed. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So it moved really fast um, through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, where are we? Uh, at Ham and NASA said research scientists uh, said that the ground telescopes would have needed to point in the right direction at the right time. So I'm sure we all know how big and vast the cosmos are. Like space is. From what I understand, infinitely huge, and you can only have so many telescopes pointing at so many corners of space. All right, so they're saying one of the big reasons we didn't know that it was coming, that this was on a collision course course with Earth, is because our telescopes were not pointed in the right direction. All right, uh, all space and all time they were pointed somewhere else, and they did not see this asteroid coming. All right, unfortunately, we do not have 24-hour sur surveillance of our universe. We did, I'm sure it would have been avoidable. All right, any other questions? Anything unclear in these two paragraphs before we move on? No? no? OK, perfect. Norbert, can I get you to start reading from it would all the way down to plutonium? So one, two, three. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, it would be very faint and difficult to detect. Not impossible, but difficult. Could I say it? Experts say the Russian meteor could have produced much more serious problems in the area hosting nuclear and chemical weapons uh, disposal facilities. Dis dis disposal. Disposal facilities. Disposal facilities. Mm -hmm. Vladimir Chuprov of uh, Greenpeace Russia noted that the meteor struck only 100 kilometers from the Mayak nuclear storage and uh, disposal facility, which was dozens of tons of weapons grade uh, plutonium. Perfect. Thank you, Norbert. It would be very faint and difficult to detect. Not impossible, but difficult. So it would be very faint. What does it mean to be faint? It's like impossible, but a different way. It's like what? Sorry, Imad? Uh, maybe. It's like impossible, but uh, yeah, faint is very light. Like where the weak. Pos yeah weak exactly. So faint is weak and light. Okay, so some when the when the possibility of it happening is very little or very low, then it's a weak. It's a faint possibility. Okay, you can say weak as well. It would mean the exact same thing. All right, it, it would be very faint and difficult to detect. Not impossible, but difficult. Experts said that the Russian meteor could have produced much more serious problems in the area hosting nuclear and chemical weapons disposal facilities. What does this mean? This little paragraph here. Who can tell me what this means? Maybe I. Because, Go ahead. Um, yeah. You're like, I know what's going on. I want to answer. <laughs> Go ahead, Yuri. Um, Chelyabinsk is a very um, difficult town. A lot of factories. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Mayakut is a very big uh, fact nuclear factory. Um, it's a factory a safe uh, uh, nuclear weapon. Mm -hmm. And uh, near, near Chibarkul, um, um, there is um, uh, several um, um, factories uh, with um, uh, a chemical we weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it is very dangerous uh, if uh, our matter um, choose another place uh, for uh, their uh, land. To, to impact. To impact. Yes. Yeah. To impact. It, it, because when you say something landed, it, it's usually smooth. You like you, you did it on purpose. So you're, the meteorite did not land, it, it, it collided, it impacted with the earth. All right? 
perfect. May, maybe 50 kilometers um, left and it will be a very big problem. Yeah, there are a lot of nuclear disposal facilities. Everybody knows what disposal is, right? Yeah. Yeah? What is it, what is it Imad? Can you tell us? Uh, it's a place where you do dispose or uh, it's like throw away or waste because you don't yeah. yeah waste yeah waste exactly to put waste somewhere is to dispose of it okay so w you're not really disposing of the waste you're just storing it somewhere where it's not hazardous so in Russia there are a lot of uh, chemical uh, and nuclear plants and the waste that chemical and nuclear a plant produce is more dangerous than the work that happens in the plants themselves. So the factories produce very toxic and very radioactive waste and you need to get rid of it somewhere properly. Uh, unfortunately waste is not something especially radioactive waste you cannot just throw it away in the garbage or in the dustbin you need to dispose of it properly. So when you dispose of something you are throwing it away but in a way where you're storing it where it's not harmful for people. So if you were to just throw away nuclear waste in the water or on the land, it would decay and it would cause really, it would cause massive radioactive issues, all right? So you're, you're disposing of it, you're storing it, all right? So like, uh, like Yuri said, there are a lot of uh, nuclear and chemical weapon disposal facilities. So all the waste from these factories is stored in these facilities. So if the meteor had struck, like Yuri said, 50 kilometers here or there, it would have hit one of these disposal facilities, and all that nuclear and radioactive waste would have been released into the atmosphere. And it would have been, it would, it would have been catastrophic. Like, the, what would have happened is unimaginable, all right? That's, that's how dangerous these facilities can be, okay? Um, so Vladimir Chupakov, Greenpeace, Russia, noted that the meteor struck only 100 kilometers from from, so from this nuclear storage and disposal facility, which has dozens of tons of weapons-grade plutonium. Plutonium is an element. You can actually find it on the uh, periodic table, and it is very, very radioactive, okay? When it's radioactive, it means that it will react with a lot of things, and it will decay. When it decays, it will release very, uh, very dangerous rays, like gamma rays and beta rays, and those are the rays where people, because of, what people have, you know, they have genetic mutations and deformities. People get sick for their for generations if uh, they have radioactive decay early on. Okay, everybody understand what what's going on in this uh, in in this paragraph? Yes. Okay. Yes. You know something yes. about my tragedy? Tragedy. Sorry, Yuri. Uh, you know about um, uh, Chernobyl? I, yeah. I remember. Yeah, we were and, talking about uh, Chernobyl. Yeah. Uh, and you, Maya? Yeah. Yuri, just, uh, you, you just want to tell everybody what Chernobyl is? I'm not sure everybody knows. So you just want to give a little bit of a summary and then you can tell us your story. Um, in uh, 1986, uh, it was a big uh, tragedy when uh, in uh, Chernobyl a uh, nuclear station uh, um, was big um, uh, damage and yeah. after that um, uh, happened a big uh, nuclear um, blast. Uh, a blast. Yes, yeah. blast. Mm -hmm. And several tragedy was uh, about uh, 17th on uh, Mayak factory. Mm -hmm. But you don't know about it. Yeah, because exactly. Uh, uh, Chernobyl was a very bad incident that happened at one of these factories and happened in Ukraine. Norbert is saying it affected Hungary as well. It affected many countries in that region, especially Poland as well. So Poland, Ukraine, that part of Russia, because Chernobyl, the city, is located on the border uh, between uh, Ukraine and, and Russia and where Poland and all these countries are. So when it happened, uh, the nuclear core of the factory melted and it was a uranium factory and it released a vast amount of, uh, of uh, nuclear radioactive decay and people, t this happened when the years in 1984 or 86 Yuri? 86. 1986. And in to, April. Yeah, in April and to this day it's, it's what, it's almost 30 years later you still cannot live in Chernobyl. That is how much uh, radiation was released. 
So can you imagine 30 years later an incident happens and you still cannot live in that city because everything in that city is so radioactive, all right? So exactly. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us, Yuri. So you were saying that uh, 17 people died at Mayak as well because of that incident in uh, Chernobyl. No, so, no? in uh, uh, 17 years, I'm yeah. not sure exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, happened a similar tragedy on Mayak factory in Chelyabinsk. Oh, and and it, it's not popular in the news. Do you know why that is? Yes, it was 17. Yeah. That's that's a lot of people, but why do you why do you think it's not as well documented? Well it's, documented. It was a very difficult time for our countries, uh, if you okay. remember. Yeah, I know. So I mean, it's really sad when you know political turmoil takes precedence over such tragedies. But that is that is what happened, and and so. Uh, I was actually reading another article and it said that uh, a lot of times like the last meteor that was this big also fell in Russia. So there was there was this article that said how Russia has like a has like this like magnetic belt in the north because it's so high up in the north pole that it attracts all these meteorites towards it. So which is why there's a high probability the meteorite is going to crash in uh, in Russia, it's uh, it was it was an interesting article. It was very like sciencey. Okay. Anyways, um, any questions about about what we read? Anything that's unclear? So it has lots of weapons grade plutonium. So plutonium is a very very radioactive um, element. You guys can find it on the on the on the periodic table if you want. And Yuri has posted a link for us to. Uh, I'm sure we can. If you have time at the end of class, we'll look at it. Thanks, it is Yuri. about Mayak now. It's very dangerous subject now too. Yeah, exactly. So it, ha so it happened so many years ago, but up to this day, you guys can't live there because it's it's so dangerous. Thanks, Yuri, for sharing that with us. And at the end of class, uh, I'll I'll share your link and we can go through it. Okay? You can tell us a little bit about it. It can be Yuri's time to like teach us about Russia. Awesome. Um, so if, is everybody clear? If everybody is clear, let's uh, let's finish off the uh, the article. Yes. Teacher. Yeah. Go okay. ahead. Yeah. Somebody somebody said teacher. Hi, Fanfu. Uh, yes. What's uh, the difference between dozens and tons? Oh, okay. Dozens. Okay. Dozen. How many is a dozen? Who can tell me how many is in a dozen? Twelve. Yeah. Exactly. So a dozen is twelve. I don't know why this is not working. Dozen means 12, okay? So when you say a dozen, it means it automatically means 12. So when you say dozens, it means multiples of 12s, okay? So you can have one dozen, which is 12. You can have two dozen, which is 24. You can have three dozen, 36, you know? So when you say dozens, it's something that is, you know, in multiples of 12. It's, it's that vast. Tons? Who can tell me what tons is? Tons is it's, uh, a lot of uh, amount. Tons is a huge amount, and it's so big that I don't even want to like. I was you... in army on uh, several objects. Uh, it's called arsenal. Arsenal. Okay, yeah, arsenal. Is, uh, that, that's that's the correct word. And tons is like it's a unit of measurement. All right, and you you the unit of measurement it's used when you have the amount of energy that a bomb releases you measure that in tons, all right? So dozens is a very, very small quantity compared to tons, okay? Do you understand, Fanfu? It's all, it's all, it's all like mathematical. It's how, how you like, you know, how you quantify things, all right? So dozens is a very small quantity compared to tons. Like tons, you're measuring like atom bombs being released, releasing energy, okay? Is that clear? Yes. Okay, awesome. You like you would say there are um, people use tons, you know, in very in everyday language as well. Like, oh my God, I have tons of things I need to do today. That's another way of saying I have so many things I need to do today. Like, you're not really saying I have a hundred thousand kilos of things to do today. You're not really saying that. It's an expression. So you're saying, oh, I have so much to do. I have tons to do. That means I have a lot to do. You won't say I have dozens to do, you know, because then you're putting a quantity. You're saying I have things to do that are multiplied by 12, you know. So it's, it's just different ways of saying things. 
it's like small town. Um, it's um, take plus uh, of small town, uh, and um, uh, there are several houses, uh, about 100 or 200, and each uh, house uh, a lot of uh, weapons, chemical weapons. Uh, I was an army on uh, uh, one of uh, this arsenal. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So Yuri was in the army and he's telling us how, how like the houses had you know weapons in them. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Yuri. Um, let's finish off our article and then we can like discuss everything that we want to talk about, what we think, what our feelings are, what we think should have happened, what didn't happen, all that. Uh, who Facundo. Hi Facundo. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Fine, thanks. Awesome. From uh, yeah. I read from the panic. Yes, exactly. So the panic and confusion and all the way to the end. Okay. The panic and confusion that followed the meteor quickly gave way to typical Russian black humors. And humor. Humor. And There's no S at the hu end. Hum okay. Humor yeah. and entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial. Entre. Uh, entrepreneurial instinct. Yes. Several people smashed it in the windows of their house in the houses. hopes of re houses. receiving houses, houses mm -hmm. in the hopes of receiving compensation receiving receiving, receiving compensation, compensation. Mm -hmm. the RIA Novosti news agency reported other quickly took to the internet and put what they said were meteorite, meteorite fragments up for sale one of the most popular jokes was that the meteorite was supposed to fall on December 21, 2012, when many believed that Mayan calendar predicted the end of the war, but was delivered late by Russians notoriously in fact in in, inefficient, inefficient, in, inefficient postal service. Perfect. Thank you for <laughs> putting that with us. So there's a Thanks. little bit of a joke going on there as well. So let's let's read it from the start and then see what see what we can get. So there was panic and confusion, but it quickly after the panic and confusion subsided. Does anybody know what it means to subside? Subside? Okay, I've written it in the chat box. Okay. So when the panic and confusion subsided, when it finished or when it went back. Okay, so another way to use subsided, not alter. Alter means to change. Subside means to go back. Okay, so for example, if it's a really sunny day and there are all of a sudden you see clouds, you're going to be like, oh my God, it's going to rain, you know, but all of a sudden the clouds subside and it's sunny again. So all of a sudden the clouds go back, they stop being there and it it's a sunny day again all right so when also in russia there was a lot of panic initially but when all the panic subsided so when all the panic finished it was all in the past people what is this what, what people are doing they're selling stuff and they're breaking their own windows to get you know uh, compensation there's a word for this what word is it what are you doing to an event that's the c you are commercializing it. Does everybody know what commercializing is? Commercializing, okay? So get after, money. Exactly. So after all the all the panic finished, people are like, okay, you know what? We're gonna make money off of this. All right. Which is really sad because this was this is such a it's such a prominent you know, thing that's happened in history, and after all the panic, I mean, it, it's it's awesome that nobody died, and it wasn't as much damage that it could could have been. But people started commercializing it, and how did they commercialize it? Uh, uh, Russia's black humor and entrepreneurial instincts. Uh, what does that mean, Yuri? Do you can you do you want to explain to us black humor and entrepreneurial instincts? What are people in Russia like that they're saying this? Um, black humor. It's not very good humor. <laughs> It's like not the humor I want to talk about. But what is entrepreneurial instincts? It's um, um everybody instincts, knows. It's uh, your feeling. It's your second, uh, not yeah. second. 
Yeah. Um, like six feelings. Yeah, six sense. You, you, the real, real. Yes. Yeah, six sense. So instinct is a feeling. So what's an entrepreneurial sense? To use. To use. Using. Yeah, Norbert, you were going to say something entrepreneurial. Right. And uh, all Russian internet uh, full of uh, joke about uh, Chelyabinsk and meteorite now, really. Yeah, it, it, and like I said, it's really it's unfortunate that people turn an event commercialized so quickly, but. It, it, that article is saying that entrepreneurial instincts, so people are like, okay, well, I have a feeling that I can make money off of this. So people start, they start commercializing it. What are some of the things that people did? Several people uh, smashed in the windows of their houses in hopes of receiving compensation. All right? Mm -hmm. So people yes. were, yeah, they were breaking their own windows. They're like, I'm going to break my window and I can have something on the news. People are going to interview me. I can tell the government, you know, this is, this happened because of the meteor. Give me money so I can fix my window, okay? So people are, people are taking advantage, all right? Everybody knows that? Taking advantage. The people are taking advantage of this incident to get what they want out of it, all right? What other stuff are people... Because I want to get profit. Yeah, exactly. From this incident. Exactly. But it's not a very clever uh, step because I'm not sure that our government uh, lets uh, do it, really. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and again, I wouldn't know how it really is in Russia that, you know, will the government pay for all the people whose houses have been damaged? I'm not too sure. But people are like, um, if I can make money off of it, I will, you know. So they have, they have sort of, you know, diminished what this incident uh, actually means, all right? Free money. Hamid saying free money. Exactly, free money. That's basically what it is. Uh, other people quickly took to the internet for what they said were meteorite fragments up for sale. So, Yuri, yes. have you been reading on eBay people selling meteorites from yes, Russia? Yes, uh, $300. <gasps> That's so much money. <laughs> so, you just, so, you, so you go into your garden and you look at a rock and you paint it purple and you go like, this is a meteorite, give me $300 for it, you know? <laughs> Okay, um, what else? Um, one of the most popular jokes was the meteorite was supposed to fall on December 21st when many believed the Mayan calendar predicted the end of the world, but was delivered late by Russia's notoriously inefficient postal service. Is your postal service really bad, Yuri? Is postal service in Russia um, really bad? It, it's not like in, uh, in the United States when you send a letter and after one or two days, um, you get uh, it? <laughs> yes. In Russian, it's uh, maybe one mouse, for example. It, okay, wow. <laughs> so, it's, it's very funny when you, I, <laughs> for example, bought something on uh, Amazon or eBay. Yeah. Uh, uh, my book, for example, um, um, came to Moscow from New York uh, maybe three days and one mouse from Moscow to my town. Oh my god, you might as well have been like, I'm going to go to Moscow and get that book. I was never going to get it. Yes. <laughs> okay. And Russian postal, uh, post office, it's, uh, it's crazy, really. <laughs> it's I, amazing. I can imagine. So Yuri's has, Yuri has confirmed that postal service in Russia is not very efficient. So this joke is for all those who know that the Mayans supposedly predicted the end of the world, was supposed to be last year in December, uh, that the Earth was going to end by a meteorite hit. Um, the, the joke is that the meteorite got to Earth two months late because, you know, it had to land in Russia and Russia's postal service just couldn't deliver on time, all right? So... The uh, main popular joke was that uh, one of the strong uh, Chelyabinsk um, men, um, it was present for his girl, it was present for uh, his girl. <laughs> honey, uh, honey, I got you a rock as big as all of space. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> when, uh, when, uh, when a guy when, uh, in North America, when you get uh, engaged or you're going to get married and you have an engagement and you buy a ring, the, the, it's usually supposed to be a diamond, you know, like mostly girls like diamonds, so you're supposed to uh, propose with a diamond ring. So that's called a rock. Uh, the slang for your ring is rock. So it's been like, 
how big is that rock he got you, you know? So somebody could ask you that when you get engaged, like, oh my God, check out how big my rock is, all right? So the joke is that this guy got this rock for his girl. He's like, I'm going to get you the biggest rock out there, all right? So I'm not going to get you a small diamond. I'm going to get you, like, an asteroid and, like, you know, here you go, honey. I love you. <laughs> All right. I hope that's clear. So that's it's a little bit of slang as well. So your your engagement ring or any any diamond or any rock or any stone that is really big is called a rock. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Yuri, for sharing that with us. All right, and we are actually done with our article. Um, I would I would recommend that everybody keep this article with you, uh, because it has really really nice videos, uh, in it. And it shows you uh, it shows you the amateur videos that people in Russia made. Uh, you know, they just whipped out their cameras and they started making videos and they put them on YouTube and wherever. There's also a really good video that shows you why uh, the asteroid came towards the Earth. So cosmic coincidence. Okay. So I'm just going to share my screen and show that with you guys. Show 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 you guys which one it is. Okay. It's this one. So. So this video one, video two, video three. This is a video made by NASA showing you what actually happened. All right, these are ads right now. Okay, um, and there's also something here. This is in Russian. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't know if this is a joke. It looks like a joke, <laughs> so I won't stress too much. Okay. The best tower the is best... measured. The best tower, a uh, clock the, tower. The best. Oh, is that what it says? Uh. The, the the best hour. The best uh, hour. No, sorry. That's okay. I, I write it. Okay, that's okay. All right, and Yuri actually uh, alarm. Okay. Alarm. Alarm. Sorry. alarm. Yeah, that's okay. Alarm. All right, so it's the alarm. It was morning. <laughs> All right, it was morning time. Yeah, so Yuri's saying that it's uh, this was like a wake up alarm. Like, okay, people, the day has started. It's nine o'clock. Boom. Meteorite strike. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and uh, Yuri actually shared a document with us. Yuri, can you post it down here again? And it was about um, Mayak. Mayak is that the name, Yuri? So yeah, if if uh, for all those who are interested, oh yeah, it's uh, Norbert pasted. So for all those who are interested to know more about you know what happened in Russia and just you know in general what happens when a meteorite strikes the Earth, you know what happens when it damages a, a nuclear radi like a radioactive factory. What are the consequences? How are people affected? What happens to that city? You know, if you guys are interested in knowing more, uh, you definitely. Uh, read on the article that we just read. Also, if you open, I'll, I'm going to share this. I'm going to share this with everybody. All right. So this is a, a PDF that Yuri has linked us. Mayak, a 50-year tragedy. So he, uh, so Yuri told us that Mayak is a, also a city in Russia where something similar to Chernobyl happened. So there was a factory, and uh, it, uh, it they had an accident. And people still can't live there in that factory because of how, uh, not in that factory, in that town because of how radioactive it is, all right? So if you guys are interested to know more about that, then Yuri has been more than nice to link us this article. Thank you, Yuri, for that. And uh, it's in the Verblink chat box. Norbert just relinked it to us, okay? So that is my class. I am so happy I was able to get through this article. We did this class yesterday. I wasn't able to broadcast it and uh, we only got through like the first part of uh, that news article but I'm glad I covered all of it. There were some people in class who actually didn't even know that this had happened in Russia so it was a good way to be like you know what news is pertinent and you guys need to keep up with it okay I want to thank Yuri Yuri thank you so much for answering thank you. our questions about what the, you know what it's like living there right now if you guys have any other questions uh, anything that was unclear feel free to give me feedback on verbling the give teacher feed give feedback teacher button now works or you guys can go on my Facebook and give me fee feedback there I am going to be scheduling classes for next week today. So if you want a class scheduled, if you want me to teach on some a topic or grammar, whatever, let me know and I will do my best 
and I will uh, schedule a class on that, all right? And here is my Facebook. I am out. Next class should be beginning any minute now. Thank you, guys. It was so much fun talking to you. It was so much fun sharing this uh, piece of news, reading with you guys. I am out. I'll see you guys next week. Make sure you okay. make some recommendations for what you want me to teach. Thanks. Bye, Bye, guys. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, Gina.